Have you ever left your home in the morning on your way to work without saying goodbye to your loved ones? Even if you're angry or upset? Good evening, my fellow Toastmaster, DTM Nick Smith, and our most welcome guest. Many years ago, I remember watching in the news, there has been a terrible accident. This woman has passed away or this man has died. And what struck me was whether it's a car accident or a shooting, when this horrible news is followed by, and they leave two kids behind. I always ask myself the same question. Were, did they, those kids have the opportunity to say goodbye to those parents in the morning? Did, were they happy or angry or sad? Did they say nice things to each other? <clears throat> Or did they say mean things? Because sometimes some people are angry in the morning, even if they didn't mean it. When my daughter started pre-K, uh, pre uh, pre uh, pre I started this thing that I would never drop them at school without saying goodbye, with plenty of hugs and kisses. And boy, do I have a lot of hugs and kisses. We say our goodbye like there's no tomorrow, like it was the last time that we we're gonna see each other. Because most of the days, I will be stuck in traffic on my way to and from work, or I'll be driving two or three hours during the day. And who knows what would happen during the day? I don't want that last interaction with my daughters as a single mom will be horrible or sad or angry. I want it to be joyful. Now, you may be thinking, what if we had a bad morning? If we were angry, I was angry or they were angry. I can remember only one time that I had an argument with my daughter earlier that morning. She was about eight years old. I pull up in the school and she storms out of the car and runs through the school. I got out of the car and all of a sudden my anger turned into sadness because for the first time I didn't have a chance to say goodbye and I just stood there. And after a brief while, I see her peeking out of the gate. And I just smiled. And when she saw me smile, she ran towards me and I ran towards her. And it looked like a scene of a telenovela. And in case you don't know what a telenovela is, a Hispanic, Hispanic soap opera, but with a lot of drama. We hug each other like there was no tomorrow, like harder than ever. We didn't say a word, but that was the end of the argument because that was the first time that for a brief moment, we almost didn't do our goodbye routine. And this lasts all the way to high school and all the way through college. And it's gonna be the same routine that we're gonna have this weekend when we part our ways at the Punta Cana airport. Anyway, you will be thinking through high school, but what did their high school friends think about this little scene of yours? High school kids don't like to see that being hugged by their parents or being kissed by their parents. Well, my daughter had been attending to the same school since pre-K. And there were times that some of the new kids will try to make fun of them. But then the other kids will say, first of all, they will shut them immediately. And they would say, nah, those are Las Peñas. Las Peñas is the last name, and that's what they call them. Because they were used to our little scene, because it was a moment that we had every single morning, and everybody knew about it. Now, why this is so important? When I was growing up, I knew that my parents loved me and everything, even though my father never showed it, because as, as an Hispanic man, they had to be tough, that macho man. They can't show emotion because that's a sign of weakness. So he never show any kind of emotion. And do you think that I was gonna let him get away with that? I'm a hugger, of course not. I was the one that will always write him a letter, a card, whether it's his birthday, Father's Day, or any other occasion, to the point that he may cry, or at least he may be moved, right? I will hug him so hard that he will sometimes push me away. I will always remind him how much I love him because 
this is the thing. As much as you repeat sometimes something, some, it will stick, it will stuck, right? So I was hoping that someday you will be able to repeat it. In 2012, earlier that year, I was again stuck in traffic because that's all you do in Puerto Rico, stuck in traffic. So I had a really long time to be in the car and speak on the phone. I was talking to my mom and all of a sudden she passes the phone to my dad. And before we spoke for a little bit and before he passed the phone back to my mom, he said, I love you. That was the first time that I remember hearing those three words. I was so in shock that I, when my mom was back on the phone, I was like, did you hear that? He said he loved me. I could tell that she was crying on the other side because her voice was cracking. And she said, si, lo escuché, which is, yes, I heard that. Sometimes people don't realize how, how big of an impact some, li some little simple words will make on the other person. For me, those three words meant the world to me. I don't remember if he ever said it again, but boy, do I remember exactly the point in the road where I was the first time that I heard those three words. Later that year, he passed away. Still to this day, whenever I meet with my mom, my daughters, my nieces, my sister, my boyfriend, or anybody important in my life, I always remember them how much they mean to me. I always tell them how much I love them and hug them and kiss them. Love and respect goes a long way. My fellow Toastmaster, make sure that you let your loved ones know how much they mean to you. Don't leave it for tomorrow, because you never know if tomorrow will ever, will ever come. Back to you, Lisa.